It started a long time ago, about the age of five. Um, I've been uh, doing this music thing for quite some time. The first one to really notice that I had the talent. Start with was my uncle, Reverend Lonnie J. White. He saw in me some things in which um, he felt like he needed to uh, let everybody else see. And, you know, he was very much responsible for opening up doors for me as a kid to get on stages in churches and different things like this to uh, expose, you know, myself and my talents. We were living just door to door from one another, uh, his house and uh, my house were um, just an arm length apart. Brother Wendell was always have been an awesome young man, young boy, uh, very, very uh, manable, would always do what I asked him to do. Um, all of uh, Wendell's early life, he was a very different young man, a young child, from uh, the other young children, his brothers and uh, even my boys. Um, Wendell wouldn't, you wouldn't find Wendell uh, like the other kids would be running up, running up and down Lee racing one another, uh, running and see, seeing who was the fastest. But you wouldn't find Wendell uh, in that group. <clears throat> Often, more likely, you would find uh, Brother uh, Wendell in the backyard or uh, in the basement somewhere, tinkling, making something. Um, I think Brother Wendell's first PA system uh, was that he sung on and uh, he, he made it. Uh, the speakers that he made, the very first speakers, uh, I used them at my church. Brother Wendell was quite, quite, uh, in, in, in influential in making and putting putting things together. Uh, my first group, the Sensational Wonders, we, we were a, uh, a young, innovative group. I was always and was the lead singer of every group I've ever been in, always been out front. Uh, even now, I am always the one who makes it happen. I gotta make it happen, but I've had my uncles that came out the forefront, a group by the name of the Gospel White Brothers, uh, in which originated in the city of St. Louis, that uh, you know took, took me pretty much as a little boy all around the world with them also. You know, my uncle Lonnie uh, went on to uh, introduce me to the South region as a young man, uh, singing at all some of the biggest churches, opening up from for some of the biggest gospel acts, um, the Mighty Clouds of Joy, Shirley Caesar, um, the Ken Spirituals, and, and on and on and on. I mean, there were so many great things that they were able to show me in this music thing. We didn't really have to do a lot to get Wendell some type of a, a tone, you know, uh, to his voice. To be truthful, you can just say Wendell is a born singer. He was just such a, a master uh, in, in, in his vocal singing. And he could stage a song, he could set a song, and being in such a, uh, such a young age. 
uh, Wendell started off uh, a kid that would like to be by himself a lot of times. He would do anything. He would experiment. But we just thought it was normal coming up. But we know now that it was God and my mom and my dad that kept us so closely knitted together. And we were uh, raised in the manner that, man, I sang all the time. So all of my brothers were, they were just so supportive of me, you know. And as I began to sing, you know, my brother Anthony, he, uh, he take up after me a lot and he began to sing around the house and I began to show him different notes and things like that and you know he ended up having my back in the sensational wonders with a smooth tone you know my little brother he can blow. We started out probably like 13 14 years old uh, gospel group sensational wonders um, but when I think about it today I, I can't even believe the type of programs we were on we were um, opening up for Mighty Clouds of Joy, Shirley Caesar, Five Blind Boys, the Williams Brothers, um, uh, my uncle, uh, Uncle Mosel had us on all those programs. Uh, it was like common nature for us to just be sitting in an auditorium with the Mighty Clouds of Joy, uh, getting ready to open up for those folks when they came to town. So uh, we've been singing a long time. Uh, you know, obviously over the years, uh, We've gone our separate ways. Some people have gone out into the work world. But when, stay with the project. Um, and uh, if you if you definitely talk about real music, you definitely want to listen to some of Wynn's music. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, produced. Um, the whole nine is done by him. And a lot, I think a lot of people are missing out. Uh, if they're looking to get back to real music, um, music you can believe in. Uh, you need to check out when they'll be. Well, the second set of Sensational Wonders, you know, consisted more of family, all family. Uh, when uh, when we begin to get older, the first set of Sensational Wonders, we kind of like uh, went our own way. But, you know, no one took that music thing as deep and as loving as I did. The music is in my mind, my heart, my body, my soul. And I, I give my best when I'm putting down a track, writing lyrics or whatever I did. I mean, from a child, I was so deep. See, I ran with my uncle, so I saw a lot of things at a young age. Maybe I shouldn't have saw, but you know how a young child is running around my, you know, grown folk, you know, they get the chance to hear and see things. But you know, my uncle wasn't no bad guy, so I didn't see anything bad. But the point is, is you know, I kind of knew how to, cuss a little bit before uh, you know maybe I was supposed to cuss but that wasn't the only thing I picked up I picked up knowledge I was, I was the type of kid that I could hustle you know I could grass fix cars or did whatever I needed to do in order to make whatever happen so at the age of 14 15 I cut so many lines in the neighborhood that I saved up enough money to cut my first 45 and I was blessed to do it in a studio and with a legend in the St. Louis region by the name of Oliver Sane. Oliver Sane was the saxophone player for uh, Tina, Ike and Tina Turner and he's a legend around the St. Louis area, all around the world really, uh, but he's never got the just do, but he has helped so many like myself to be introduced to this music game on another level. So my first 45 was cut on Vanessa Records. I remember the day Oliver and myself uh, sat down to make this agreement on the 45. He told me, he said, boy, you sang so good, you just need a woman just to shut up and listen. You know, when you when, when you start singing for them girls, them girls make you hit some notes you didn't know you could hit. You heard? <laughs> so my, my point is, is I started developing my vocal ability more and more and more. You know, I've always had this Luther Vandross sound. And in school, they call me Luther. Uh, uh, this deep, yeah, sound that, that, that everybody just moved about so much. And, 
I, I just took it and I developed it. And, you know, I took a little bit of Freddie Jackson, uh, a little bit of Luther Vandross, a little bit of Barry White, a little bit of Donnie Hathaway, and I created Wendell B. You know, and this is how I came up with me. So my high school group, we got a chance to, man, we won every talent show in the city. We won it, you know, because I had some awesome guys behind me and I definitely uh, was already trained. Man, you know, I was so into my music. I already knew what I wanted to do for life, you know, and I always knew it was music. So in school, I would skip a couple of classes or so, you know, to go and prep to do my talent show later on that night or what have you. And so, you know, I wasn't really a, a kid that loved school. You know, I did school and all of that, but I wanted to do what I'm doing today. And uh, so I would skip my last period class. Miss Reynolds, I'm sorry, Miss Reynolds, but I'm still doing my thing. And, uh, you know, I ended up having to go over to another high school, you know, because I didn't graduate on time. But I ain't ashamed of that because I kept on my grind and um, my class, I represent them right now all over the world, you know, I was missing two credits. So me and my cousin Don, in which we were at rehearsal in my group, The Sensational Wonders, the second set of Sensational Wonders, and uh, we were at rehearsal one night, and Don walked up to me and he said, when? Man, I gotta do summer school. And I looked at him and I said, hey, me too. <laughs> so, you know, people always thought we were playing. We said we were cousins in school and things like that. We actually didn't start off going to school together. I, I was at Central, Wayne was at Beaumont, and um, we were actually in a, um, our church singing group. You know, I played the drums, and Wayne was always the lead singer, of course. And um, went to a rehearsal and um, found out I hadn't been doing what I was supposed to be doing in school, and, and neither had we, and he was singing too much in the hall, so. We ended up both having to repeat a little bit of the 12th grade. So we went over to Northwest and um, basically did a lot of singing over there and um, did some talent shows and did some things. But me and we have been together a long time, you know, um, been um, like best friends, you know, outside of just being cousins. Our, we are blood cousins, but also just being um, being good, good friends to each other, you know, going through thick and thin, different things that we had to do in life and um, just growing up together. Grew up in a church background, but also wanted to do a little bit of other things, you know, get out, party, and do other things. So, you know, definitely our mothers didn't understand that, and they wanted to uh, restrict us, but, you know, we, we were able to do a few things that we wanted to do. Back in the beginning, in the late 70s, Wendell invited me down to Wesley House, and as we went down to Wesley House, we met up with a friend of ours from grade school named Brian Shannon. At that time, they had already been together and they was uh, singing the song called What's Your Name? I still remember it like it was yesterday. And as they sang that song, I began to put the baritone on it. And when I put the baritone on it, we had harmony and our voices just gelled like it was made to sing together. And we were not only singing in Beaumont, but we were singing all out in the county schools. And it was a lot of fun, I mean, it was a lot of enjoyment. Uh, we were probably considered one of the better groups in St. Louis, always going up against a lot of the older groups and just basically destroying them. And for us to be so young as we were, and the other groups were supposed to be so much more mature than us, we were just walking right through them. Um, basically, uh, we had a lot of fun in the group. A lot of times we were going out to nightclubs that weren't, we weren't supposed to be there. And um, one time we were at the nightclub singing and they were throwing money on the stage. And uh, just so happened, I saw a five dollar bill come on the stage and uh, Brian started at the same time while Wendell was singing and we were all backing him up and I stepped on the money and 
We both stopped singing just to get to, get to the money. It was real funny. I remember the, the days of the Beaumont Blue Jackets versus the, some of the Bulldogs and football and basketball. Well, what people didn't also understand is that each one of those high schools also had talent shows. And we would match talents from school to school. And hands down, Wendell B always represented the, always represented, uh, the uh, Blue Jackets. And he always won, man. He was just a sensation, even back in the 70s to the days of uh, high school. And so from that point on, I've just followed his career. I've established that we've got a great friendship. We're, we're, you know, we're like brothers. And all of my professional career as a radio personality, I've always, always been a Wendell B fan. Yeah, and after high school, you know, I was uh, a big jingleist. You know, I did all kinds of jingles on the air for a lot of hair care products and different things like that. So uh, I was able to, uh, at a spot I was at for a while called Miller and Sons Beauty Supply, I ended up doing the commercials uh, for Miller and Sons, Paul Miller uh, and Sons, and which later on became personal service. Beauty supply, and um, this is where I uh, had the opportunity to do my first jingle. And man, they put my voice on the air, and man, everybody thought it was Luther Vandross. Uh, with 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 people thinking that, wow, man, who is this? And this is how I began to get uh, paid off of my first little, you know, make my first little money, and you know, real money in the music business uh, by doing jingles and, and, and doing things that uh, made me a little cash so I could, you know, get me some extra, extra Mickey D's and stuff like that. <laughs> Take my boys out, we would get into Seville Cadillac. I had a Seville Cadillac with a burn on the hood. <laughs> 